The Bible says in Psalms 121, verses are 1 and 2, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill, for whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who make heaven and earth. We are in a world where we need God's help. Brother Polk's prayer uh, was so timely because he's right, the kind of world that we live in. We need to turn to God and ask God to uh, continue to be long-suffering towards uh, this world and how we have turned our faces away from God. But thanks be to God that is always a remnant, always a group uh, that want to please him. And we thank God for your presence on uh, this morning. Uh, so if I were to say to you right now, Look out. Uh, many of you would uh, duck. You'd certainly be expe uh, expecting harm to be somewhere near. If I were to shout, look out. I mean, that, that goes with uh, that phrase, look out. But if I was to say to you, look up, many of you with great curiosity would look up, looking to see perhaps some wonderment that's up in the uh, sky. What is it is that he's talking about? What is it that he want me to see? So looking out and looking up is what we're going to talk about on this morning. That will play a very important part in our lesson for today. I want to look at the great prophet Elijah uh, on today. Now, Elijah was the one who replaced the great prophet Elijah. Although their names sound uh, similar, their presentation and their character uh, is totally different. For an example, Elijah was a hairy man. The Bible tells us in 2 Kings chapter 1, and the verse is 8. Whereas Elijah was bald. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 2, and the verse is 23. Elijah, you see, slept in a cave. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 9. Whereas Elijah had a house, 2 Kings chapter 6, and the verse is 32. Elijah was unwelcomed by the king of Israel, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 17. Whereas Elijah was a trusted advisor of the successor king of Israel, we find that in 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. So their names are similar but they were totally different individuals. Uh, God used them in different ways to bring out his will. You see, God needed a certain character uh, or characteristics uh, in a prophet to carry out his will at the time. See, God is all knowing. He knows us. He knows and knew these two men, how they would uh, affect his overall work and his plan with things going on. So God used these men, even though they're different, in many ways to accomplish his will. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 6, and that's going to be our text for this morning that we'll start. If you'll turn there, 2 Kings chapter 6. And I want to read for you, starting at verse number 8, and conclude around verse number 18. Because we're going to look at a situation that, help, uh, that happened uh, with Elijah. Again, he's the replacement of, you see, Elijah. When we begin to look at the background of what's taking place, as I mentioned, you know, O Elijah uh, with King Ahab, you see, they were like uh, adversaries. Uh, didn't get along, didn't work together. But that was not the case with Elijah because he was trusted and he was always giving advice to the to the king. And the king listened uh, to Elijah to his benefit. And that's what we're going to read about uh, on this morning a little bit. Keep in mind that Elijah was trusted by the successor king of 
Israel. The Bible says at 2 Kings chapter 6, starting at the 8th verse, the Bible says, Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he had consulted with his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware what you do. Do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. God had given, you see, Elijah the message of what this king wanted to do to God's people. The Bible says at verse number 10, Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place, of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, not just once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, who has betrayed me? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the, the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely, he is in Dothan. You see, the king of Syria is very upset at what Elijah has done. He has caused him to change his plan, his surprise attack. It will not take place because the man of God have told the king of Israel, don't go to that place, for he's there in wait. The Bible says at verse number 14, Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? If you can imagine waking up from a night's sleep, going out and seeing your whole city surrounded by horses and chariots of enemies who have come down to find the man of God, Elijah, because he has upset the king of Syria. He's going to deal with him. Bring him to me. I want you to find him. So the servant goes out and wakes up and look around and sees that the city has been surrounded with the enemies. So he says to his master, alas, what shall we do? He looks out and sees a problem. What shall we do? Our enemies have surrounded us. The Bible says at verse number 16, So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. You know, when you look at going in competition or battle or whatever the case may be, it's always good to have more of you than the enemy. Am I right? So he looks out there. He says, the numbers are against us. But Elijah said, uh-uh, don't you fear. For those that are with us are more than those who are with them. So we got us against them. It's always us against them. Am I right? When we go through this life, we have to look at us as opposed to them. There will always be them out there who's against us. So we need to realize what he has seen. The Bible says at verse number 17, And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elijah prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness 
according to the word of Elijah. You see, when you look at us, as opposed to them, us would represent all baptized believers, those who have obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, that's us in the world. And we know that there are very few of us. In fact, we wish there was a whole lot more of us. But the world, you see, is lost. The world is wicked. The world is seeking their own path. The world have decided to follow the devil rather than Jesus. So it's more of them in this world when you and I look out when it comes to us. We always feel like we don't, we don't have the numbers for us. You see, when you look at the world and you look at people and how they behave, just the way uh, they carry themselves, the way they live. It makes us wonder, when will God pull the curtain down on this world? It's so many of them that's out there that's wreaking havoc in the world. So much evil being done, not just with individuals, but with even countries and things that we see and witness. I don't know about you, but I, I didn't think I would live to see the things that I see today. You would have, if you'd have told me 20, 25 years ago that I'll be witnessing some of the things that I'm seeing, I'd have said, uh, I doubt that would happen in my day. But things you see have been sped up and the world you see is caught into sin and the devil is having his way. It's going to always be them out there. We can clearly see them. But what we need to understand is what about us? Just like you see the servant of Elijah, when he woke up, his problem was, and his problem is just like you and I, instead of him looking up, the servant looked out. And whenever you look out, you always see problems. That's how the world is for you and I. When, when something comes in our lives, you see, and we see that we have to deal with them, too many times, rather than looking up, we are caught looking out. And when we look out, you know what we will see? We will see all the negative things that the devil has put in place. We will always see them out there. We will always will assume that it's more of them than it is of us. But if only we will look up, if we will look up like the prophet Elijah told and prayed to God for his servant to do. And when God opened up his eyes, he was able to see, no, it's more of us than they are of them. You see, if we don't look up, we will always be forced to think that it's more of them rather than us. Don't get caught looking out when you should be looking up. Them will always be out there. And them come in many forms, you see. Them can be the job where you work. There's a whole lot of them out there. That's against, it, it appears, you and I and what we're trying to do. All we're trying to do is make a living. We want to live, you see, according to what God has given us to do. But it's always going to be them out there. Causing trouble, perhaps, for you and I. You see, them come in many forms. Them can come in our families as well. Sometimes we end up raising them. Am I right? Sometimes our children turn the exact opposite of just the way we raise them. We raise them to be us, but somehow, some way, they get caught up and become them. I'm talking about the children who are belligerent, those who will turn against their parents, those who will turn against the teaching of God. All you tried to do was raise them and show them this is the way of God. You sacrifice for them. You send them off to school. They go to a place supposedly of higher learning, come back knowing less than what they knew when you sent them off. You see, we'll always be them out there that's working against you and I. But we need to understand that God is in control. And just like the prophet Elijah knew, he knew that God was with him. He knew and saw what God had done when that city was surrounded supposedly with the enemies. And keep in mind, Elijah knew who they were coming for. They're coming for me. 
But God protected him, you see. God protected the man of God and said, I know they're coming, but I am God Almighty and I am in control of all things. And so when your servant go out and see and he panics and he becomes afraid and say, Lord, at last, Master, what shall we do? We're about to be overcome. But Elijah said, Lord, open up his eyes and let him see. And when he saw the horses and chariots that surrounded Elijah, it must have brought a great comfort to him. The same thing can be said for you and I as well. It doesn't matter how many of them it appears to be out there. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the odds may seem to be against us. We serve a God that is able to do all things. Am I right? We serve God Almighty. The numbers will always be with us because we are God's people, because we have decided to say yes to him. We serve a living God who knows all things in all places, you see, who, who knows the heart of all men, even all of them. They are under the subjection of God Almighty. That should bring great comfort to you and I. When we step in places, when we decide to do things, we ought to know that God is for us and God is not for them. Oh, I know them can look imposing. Sometimes them is taller than us. Sometimes them way more than us. Sometimes them, you see, have more prestige than us. They have better positions than us. They're more prominent than us. They appear to be a lot better and stronger than us, but they're not. Because all we have to do is remember, don't look out, look up. When we look at up and see God Almighty, we should know that God is for us. Us always have the numbers. Us will win in the end because we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord. You see, that makes a difference in our lives. Don't get caught looking out when you ought to be looking up. So the question is for you and I today. Do we believe that? Do we trust God Almighty and his word? When God says that I will never leave you, do we believe that? Do we have the confidence to stand up against the big bullies of the world who try to change our whole view of how we view God Almighty? When they tell us that there is no God, when they tell us that God has abandoned us, do we believe them or do we believe God? God, you see, never dealt with numbers anyway. On this occasion, he allowed them to see there was more of us than them. But God always worked with a smaller number in most cases. Am I right? God doesn't need to have the advantage. He is the advantage. He's all that we need. He's all that matters in this life. I don't care what it is that you're fighting. Them come in many forms. Them can come in the form of health. Am I right? You can wake, you can wake up today and I'm feeling fine. You can wake up tomorrow and uh, you can have all kind of ailments going on with you. You can find yourself hospitalized. The world can change pretty quickly. You see, that's why we need to understand that as long as we're part of God and the us, we're going to be all right. This life, you see, is only temporary. We're just a passing through. We need to get our mind and focus on things above. Yes, we're going to go through things in this life. Yes, our health will fail us. Yes, our friends will fail us on occasion. Even our spouses may fail us. But God will never fail us. All you have to do, me included, is be faithful to God all the days of our lives. Can we do that? That's what it comes down to. It's an individual thing. I tell people all the time, we come together to worship 
and spirit and truth, just like God commanded us to do. That's what he wants to do. It is to worship him and to encourage us to be faithful unto God. But make no mistake about it. It comes down to you and God. You're going to have to stand before God and give an account for the things that you have done, both good and bad. It comes down to you. You get to decide if heaven is going to be my home or not. No one can change that. No one can determine that but you. God has already laid it out. And I tell people all the time, if I miss heaven, it will be my fault. No one stopped me because I ought to have the mindset that I'm going to serve God no matter what may come my way. And then you're ready for them. Them will always be out there. Them can hurt us in this life. But if you understand that I'm a, better, I'm, a, I'm a part of something better, I'm a part of that us, I am a part of God's family, I know that when this life is over, I'm going to face him, and if he says, well done, that good and faithful servant, then I will remain part of us, and I can be with God for an eternity. Don't get Call looking out when you should be looking up. God is up. We need to understand when problems come to us, we need to look up in prayer and ask God to open up our eyes so we can see, just like the servant of Elijah. Lord, open my eyes and let me see. But what I see now, I'm in a world you see that is dark. There's problems all around me. There are things that seem to be out of my control. Lord, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But I'm going to look up to you because I know you know all things. Open my eyes that I may see. Renew me, you see. Let me know that you are God that is able to do all things according to your divine will. Don't let me get caught looking out where the devil and his minions are. Help me, God, to look up where you and your son Jesus, where you are. I want to be a child of God. And if we want to be faithful, family, look up. Don't look out. Problems are out. But the answer is up. Where God is. To God be the glory. If you're here this morning, and you're not a child of God, we want to encourage you to look up and not look out. Because God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of the world. Oh, God is so good to us. When we were at our worst, he sent heaven's best to die in our places, you see, to do what we could not do for ourselves. Only God can do that. No one has loved us like God. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for the sins of the world. You see, you come by hearing his word. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to believe that word. Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 6, the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that come to God must believe that he is and that is rewarded them that diligently seek him. Then you need to repent of your sins. Luke chapter 13 and verses 3. Jesus said, I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Then you need to confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. Matthew chapter 10, the verses are 32 and 33. He says, you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will deny you for my Father which is in heaven. Then we need to be baptized for the remission of our sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter told him, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then we need to remain faithful unto death. Revelation chapter 2 and the verses 10. There's a crown that God is going to give us if we do not quit. Be thy faithful unto death. That's all you need to do to become a part of us, you see. Us is small in numbers in this world. Our job is to go out there and create as many more of us that we can. But that's what it takes to become a part of the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus will add you to the church. Acts chapter 2, verses 47. That day, the Bible tells us that daily 
they were added to the body of Christ. And that's exactly what we want to do. If you're here today and you have not walked faithfully, perhaps you got caught looking out when you should have been looking up. You can change that the day you see. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, it tells us to pray one for another. It's power in prayer. There is healing in prayer, you see. It avails much, the Bible says. That's what we need to do to return to the Lord. He is so good to us. In spite of us saying yes on one occasion that we will serve you, many have fallen away but realized they need to come back. The God that we serve says, come back to me. I will give you a path to come back to me. No one has treated us better than God. God loves us, and we need to return that love by being faithful unto him. So if you want to come back to the Lord today, here's a great opportunity to do it. If you want to pray for someone today, now is the time to do that as well. As together we stand and sing the invitational song.